my dream was to be a basketball player. When I was 15, I played on a German tour team and we toured all over California and Oregon, played against high schools, and every coach that I met at the time, I got their personal address, so when I came back home for my sophomore year of high school, I wrote each of them a handwritten letter asking for help to come to America because I already had the passport, I just didn't know anybody. One guy writes me back and we stay in touch. He said, I'll find you a place to live. And when push came to shove, he just ditched me. I bought a one-way ticket, flew to Portland, Oregon. This was in 1997. And I was left at the airport. That coach had lined nothing up for me. There was no family, there was nothing. And so I was instantly a homeless teenager my first day in the United States. I never cussed and prayed that much at the same time. <laughs> I was waiting for a couple of hours and then some airport staff came to me and was asking questions. I look young now, but when I was 16, I probably looked like I was 12. And so they're asking, where's your family? Where are you supposed to spend the night? And I didn't have an answer to any of it. So they gave me a free calling card. So I called the coach that hooked me up with the family that never came. I tried to call the family and no one answered. Through a roundabout way, someone came and picked me up hours later, drove me behind a factory in Portland and she said, there's going to be a black SUV that's going to pull up. When that SUV pulls up, you get out of my car, and you get into that car, they'll take you wherever you need to go. But sure enough, a black SUV pulls up. I'm like, oh, great, I'll get shot my first night in the U.S. <laughs> she says, get in that car, and they'll, tell you, they'll take you wherever you need to go. Where there's an outdoor basketball camp owned by Larry Steele, who actually played at UK and won an NBA championship in the 70s with the Blazers. So they dropped me off there in the middle of the night at Larry's basketball camp. And that's where I spent my first month in the U.S., basically a servant to the kids that had the money to be there and I was just cleaning toilets, mowing the grass, and in exchange I could stay in the bunk beds and, and eat in the cafeteria. Larry Steele owned the camp, connected me to a random family in Walport, Oregon, and then they brought me to the high school. And you're not an exchange student, you're homeless, you're German, you have no money, you just washed up here somehow, like what are we gonna do? And so the shop teacher was like, well, my oldest just went off to college, I have an extra room in my house. I ended up going to a basketball camp that summer, I met another coach who was a college coach, we said, oh, that's a great story. You can crash on my couch for your senior year. He let me work out with his college team for the 6 a.m. workouts. I would go to high school, and then it would really bring my confidence up. And because of him, I ended up making my new high school team, which was a much larger team. I got a 50% scholarship at William Jessup University. We played there for four years, graduated with a, two bachelor degrees, one in counseling, one in theology. Then after that, I went to Germany, played professionally for one season. I only took one shot in the pros because I blew up my knee. So my nickname became Stats because I'm 100% shooting. I have 100% shooting percentage, 100% field goal, 100% three point in the pros. When I was five, six years old, I always wanted to be a police officer. I saw Louisville, a Metro Police Department. There was no age limit. Graduate the Academy, September 2nd, 2020. Yeah, this is fun, man. It's one way to start the drill spot. Just uh, very, very thankful for all the raises we've gotten and just the stability that it provided to my family. It almost feels like a calling. If it's just a job, take another job. But if, if it tugs on your heart and you want to do this, I say go for it 100%. This country, this police department, every other police department needs people from other countries and other cultures to, 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 to come and represent the community and make the community safer. If you've been discriminated against, heck, I've been discriminated against. I was told to go back to my country. They poured chocolate pudding down my neck, threw me against cars. I got fired from jobs because of my accent, all these things. So it's really easy to become bitter but don't do that because a lot of us that come here from other countries experience that because it's hard to avoid the bad. But there's so many great people in this country. That's what made this country really a wonderful place. And I promise you, if you keep fighting, if you stay strong, people will come around you and see that fight and see that you're not giving up and they will want to help you. That's one of the things I will say that makes America very different than most places in the world. When they see someone like that, someone will help you and you will achieve your, your goals. And I just highly encourage it. And uh, just don't give up and keep a smile on your face. So. Still got it, baby! Still got it! Woo! <laughs>